Hello and welcome back. This is lesson four of my intro to LabVIEW course. Uh, today I'm going to be covering strings. Uh, I won't be covering strings too in depth, so if you would like to learn more on those, there's a lot of there's lots of documentation online that you can read through. I'm just going to be going over some basic things. So basically, what strings are in LabVIEW are anything that involve characters that aren't like numbers, arrays, things like that. So like your letters, your any characters you can see on a keyboard, things such as that. Uh, so to start, we're going to look at the front panel. And on the front panel, I have our string controller and our string indicator, which if you go into your controls panel, you can click on your string, string file, and then you can see you have a string control and a string indicator. Uh, those are the two we're going to look at today. So what happens is in the control, you'll write any kind of word or phrase in there. And when you run it, if you see it's hooked up from here to the indicator right there following this line, it's going to spit out hello world right there. Um, so another tool, now looking at our block diagram, another tool that can be used is called string length. This will change the number of characters in that string, including spaces, into a number. So what we have here, if we go into our string folder, it's the first one up there, string length. So you can see after I ran it, it's going to follow through, go to that string length, and it's going to spit out a number. And there was a number of 11 characters in there, which makes sense because hello has five, world has five, and then there's a space between hello and world. So the next one uh, we're going to look at is uh, conversions. There's one that converts it all to lower cases and one that converts it all to upper cases. And I kind of have that set up over here. So the control hello world goes into the to uppercase converter. And if you notice, all of the letters are converted to uppercase when it spits out on this indicator right here. And that's going to keep feeding through to the lower case and it's going to spit out all lower cases on the indicator running to this one. Uh, just a pretty simple conversion there and not too complicated. The last one I want to go over because it can be used uh, just for taking if you have a bunch of different string inputs and you want to input them into like let's say one word or phrase you can use the concatenate strings. So as you can see uh, I'm using that's if I go into my strings uh, the strings also have uh, constants like you see in your booleans and your numerics so I'm using a string constant here. That's something I can fill a string into and then it'll constantly output that string and then a space constant. That will constantly output a space. And so now using that concatenate, which is right here, I can add those all together and it will read and pile it into the indicator from top to bottom. So what's going to happen is I have Obi, a space, Juan, a space, and Kenobi. So the concatenated string output indicator here will be Obi, Juan, Kenobi. And honestly, that's all I really want to cover for strings right now because a lot of the times what you'll be using for them for in basic programming is just uh, user reading like user readability outputs, things like that. So the user presses something, the string reads out some kind of output for the user to see. And that's kind of what we're going to do in the problem. So I'm going to switch over to that now. Uh, so the problem this time, ooh, we're going to hide that. That was our answer there. So for the problem, I want you to create a program that creates a random number. The user will then guess the number so the user will input a guess here and what happens is the program will read that number and spit out whether it is correct or wrong so the user has one chance to try to guess the correct number and you want a random number between one and five so I will let you work on that now and then when you hop back into the video I'll show you how to get the answer to that all right Okay, so welcome back. So looking at our block diagram, what we want to do is get that random number first between 1 and 5. So what I have is the random number generator right here. And the random number generator always outputs between 0 and 1. But when you put it through a multiplier, 
it will change that range to whatever the multiplier is. So now the range, since I multiplied it by 5, is going to be between 0 and 5. But that could be any decimal number between 0 and 5. So we want to get that rounded nice and evenly to a whole number so the user can guess just one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So I am using the, oh, we're going to change the label on so everyone can see that. I'm going to use the round to the nearest, which will round to the nearest whole number on whatever number is input into it. So that's making them nice and even whole numbers. So now the user has a guess. The guess will be set to an equal sign right here. So it will be compared to that number that you're rounding up or down to. And what happens is if it's equal, it will send a true signal out. If it's false, it will send a false signal out. And now we have that selector that we went over last time. And that selector has two string constant inputs into it. It has correct and wrong. So if it's true, it's going to show on a string indicator that it's correct. And if it's false, it's going to show on the string indicator that it's wrong. So what we're going to do is I think the number is going to be 4. And I'm going to run it. And obviously the number was not 4, but if I keep running it, eventually I'll see it is correct because the numbers matched up. And that's basically all I have for today. Uh, so thank you for checking this video out. I am apologizing now if the quality seems a little bit lower than what you're used to. I'm currently on the road right now, so it's hard to get good quality videos out, but I still want to get content out to keep everyone on track. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe, and I will see you next time.